So for more on this and what happens now, let's bring in Ambassador John Bolton, who was an ambassador to the U.N. and was also national security advisor for the Trump administration. Uh, ambassador, good morning to you. You wrote an op-ed piece saying, quote, President Joe Biden and his advisors bear significant responsibility for Iran's massive Saturday attack on Israel. What do you mean by that, sir? Well, I think there are two points. Number one, from, uh, April, uh, from October the 7th forward, uh, the administration has refused to recognize that uh, what Israel faces uh, is not just an attack from Gaza by Hamas, not just a series of isolated threats from others, but a direct war waged by Iran on Israel using all of its terrorist proxies, Hamas, uh, Hezbollah, the Houthis, uh, Iraqi and Syrian Shia militia, uh, and now 320 plus, I've heard up to 400 uh, missiles and drones. In fact, I've heard that actually uh, hundreds more were launched, but blew up on the launch pattern, never made it far enough to be intercepted by American and uh, Israeli defenses, Some, something that's worth checking out. This is a huge threat that Israel faces, and Biden has never understood that strategic context. And number two, uh, factoring into Iran's decision to launch that attack uh, on Saturday night had to have been the past four to six weeks of open criticism of the Israeli government. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer effectively calling for Netanyahu to be ousted in new elections, constant leaking by administration sources, the president himself uh, saying that uh, that Netanyahu's conduct was irresponsible in Gaza, uh, all would would help contribute to Iranian decision makers believing they could attack Israel and get away with it. Th this is a senseless policy, and in fact contributes to the continuing instability and aggression uh, in, in the Middle East because it shows lack of American resolve. And it's just frightening to watch this video play out as those drones and missiles uh, are incoming to, to Israel. I can't imagine how tense it feels on the ground this morning. A lot of people saying this, this feels like the real deal this time. Biden meeting with G7 leaders on Sunday, sharing their support for Israel, but pushing for no further escalation. Biden telling Netanyahu, we're not going to help in any counterattacks here. How can Israel respond without threatening to widen war within the region? What needs to happen now? Well, it's been in a wider war since October the 7th. And, uh, you know, this is like saying, think back, uh, not quite the, ex the same situation, but think back to Pearl Harbor, December 7, 1941. Uh, we're attacked by Imperial Japan. And our friends and allies say, now, you know, don't retaliate, don't risk a wider war, forget about it. Uh, and just today, if the United States faced 320 plus drones and missiles attacking our home territory, We'd have responded already. Uh, the, the subject that nobody uh, seems to bring up uh, is the real threat here, not just to Israel, but to the United States, uh, and really the whole world, is the Iranian nuclear weapons program. Uh, you know, the next time Israel faces incoming ballistic missiles, uh, under their nose cones may be nuclear warheads. Uh, and, and that's what they're really worried about. And that's why I think as they consider what their response uh, is going to be to Saturday's attack by Iran. Uh, it's that nuclear threat that's uh, uppermost yeah. on their mind and, and should be. Yeah, we know Israel right now uh, weighing their options, what that counterattack should look like as they look to, quote, exact their price on Iran. Even China saying that they were, quote, deeply concerned over escalating tensions here. Ambassador John Bolton, always good to have you. Thank you, sir. Thanks for watching, everybody. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. Also, don't forget to click that red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.